Welcome back to crypto market series. So in our previous video, we registered for a Coinbase account and I left it where we were inside our Coinbase account. If you look now, you'll see I'm on the Coinbase site and it's asking me to either sign in or sign up. So I logged out. That is because I logged out. So if you're still in, great. But if you signed out for any reason, then here's what you're going to do. We're going to click on the sign in button here because we already signed up. And now it's going to ask me to log in. I'm going to sign in. Now, once I sign in, it asked me to enter the verification code that it sent to my device. Again, this is a nice security um, feature that they have whereby every time you try to sign in or do certain things that we'll see, it sends a code to your phone that you register with to ensure it's you because there've been issues where people have managed to break into your account and steal all your money, whether it's you know your bank account, your you know stock market account, or even especially digital tokens. People have lost millions of dollars from people going into their account and stealing their tokens. And because like I said before, the way that um, digital token work with an address that's just a number, which we'll see late, much later, it's hard to track. Okay, so the fact here that they're sending you a, a number that to your phone that you can have to use, it means that if somebody was trying to log in as you, you will see that code on your phone and you'll be like, wait a second, I'm not trying to log in. And of course, they wouldn't be able to go any further because they don't have your phone, hopefully. All right, so I'll get my code and then I'll log in. Now, there's a thing here at the bottom that says, don't ask me for this code again on this computer for the next 30 days. If you know that though, you are gonna be the only person using this computer and nobody has have access to this computer, then you can do this. I know though I'm the only person who have access to this computer because I keep my computer very secure in the sense that I don't let anyone else use my computer. It's always locked on that sort of thing. Of course, it doesn't matter if somebody actually break into my computer and it's on my computer as me. Well, that that's a different story. But I'm going to assume here that nobody's going to access my computer illegally within the next 30 days. And I know nobody has access my computer otherwise. So I'm going to check that button and I'm going to get my code and type it in. Now that we've logged in, we want to go at a payment method. And you can see we have several here. They're recommending that how you use a bank account, but you can link to a PayPal, debit card, or wire do wire transfer. Now, once you click on bank, we can link in a bank account, you're going to use this service to perform transactions against your account, either right? deposit money or withdraw money and that sort of thing. And so Coinbase and many other places use Plaid. And essentially what you require is that your bank or your financial institution allows you to log in online. If you have an online account that you can go to your bank and log in is the same credential that you're providing here within Coinbase. So Plaid is going to contact your financial institution essentially as you, because it knows the URL to log in and the web page to log in, and then it's going to try and log in. But fear not, what's going to happen is most likely you have set up with your financial institution some way to verify again, just like when you try to log into Coinbase and it asks you to enter a code. Well, your financial institution would have had something like that, whereby if you try to log in from some unknown device, which is what Plaid would be, then they're going to send you, offer to send you a code to whatever you've configured, either by email or telephone number and so on. And you can then select the one that you want to use and link to this account. After you've done that, it's going to say up in the corner there that it's going to um, take a few minutes. Now, if the name that you sign up with for your account doesn't match the name on the bank account, then it's going to fail. So you definitely want to be using an account that you own and you know, you open your name. So let's do this again. And I'm going to skip to where I have successfully added an account that uh, matches the name that I opened this um, Coinbase with. And it's going to be successful. And you see a little green um, toast, they call it, which is a message that comes up and then disappear, that comes up um, in the top that says Su account successfully had it or something, or banks link successfully, something like that. And now your account is, your Coinbase is linked to your bank. With that completed, this little green button that says add a payment method is going to go away because you've already added a payment method. You could have multiple payment methods, that's up to you, but we're just interested in adding one so we can 
start buying tokens. Once you have successfully added a payment method, great. The next step now is to buy tokens. And we'll do that in the very next video. So I want to keep these nice and short and address one and one thing only. So that way, depending on what you're working on, you could just come to that specific video, work on that thing, or leave a comment on that specific thing, as opposed to if the video tried to do too many things. All right. See you in the next video where we're actually going to buy a token because I'm assuming that you successfully link a payment method.